All right, so today we talk about simple harmonic motions, and uh, we're going to do a little bit of trig graphing again. So here we go. Uh, when objects oscillate, in other words, fluctuate up and down, as you can see in this diagram over here to the left, the spring is moving up and down, and you can see how the, the bob rotates in kind of a sine or cosine type pattern, depending on where you start. We call this simple harmonic motion. And as you can see over here on the right, here's the spring. When it's hanging at rest, okay, we say that's at equilibrium position. And then it's maximum displacement. In other words, how much it varies from equilibrium is called the amplitude. So it's really no different than what we've studied with the sine and cosine amplitudes. The period's the same as in a sine and cosine graph, how long it takes to move up, down, and up, or go back to start repeating again. And the period it takes for one, or the picture of one period is called the cycle. All right? Now, another little concept is the equation of these type of graphs, and they can either be in sine and cosine fashion. Now, this is the equation the book gives, and they use this variable right here, omega, so a cosine omega t or d equals a sine omega t to describe the oscillation motion or the simple harmonic motion. This really functions just like the k we used in our previous example. So we can use k, we can use omega, it really doesn't matter. And you can see that the period calculation is equal to 2 pi over omega, which is the same as 2 pi over k as we did previously in our trig graphs. Now, the difference is we talk about something called a frequency, describes the number of cycles in a period of time, and all that really is is the frequency is just the reciprocal of the period. So if we take and talk about a problem like this, you've got an object in simple harmonic motion, it's got a frequency of a half oscillation per minute, and an amplitude of six feet, and we want to describe this motion using d is equal to a sine omega t. Uh, we want to write that equation. We know that the frequency is equal to a half, so therefore the period is equal to 2. And if 2, which is the period, is equal to 2 pi over omega or k or whatever you want to call it, then Omega is equal to pi. And then we know that we have an amplitude of 6, so that goes into the A value. So D in this case is equal to 6 sine of pi t. Moving on to another equation. In this case, they give us the actual equation of the harmonic motion, and we're asked to describe what's the maximum displacement from rest. That's just the amplitude, so max displacement is equal to 1 16th units, since we aren't talking feet in this case in cents. And what's the time required for one oscillation? So what they're basically asking for is the frequency. Or, or, I'm sorry, the period, and then they're going to ask for the frequency after that. So the period equals 2 pi, once again, over omega, 2 pi over, here's our omega value, 120 pi is equal to our period. So our period is equal to 1 over 60. And then the frequency is just the reciprocal of that. All right, that's basically all we've got with the harmonic motion, just some basic calculations. Next thing we're going to talk about is adding two sine and cosine functions. So what I have in front of you is a graph of cosine and sine on the same graph. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually add these two graphs and represent their sum as a new graph. So the way I do that is I do it just like I would add two numbers like, for instance, 5 and 7. We know 5 plus 7 is equal to 12. 
right? So all of these graphs have associated values with them, and the value of the sine graph at zero radians is zero, and the value of the cosine graph is one. So I'm adding zero plus one, and I get this. Now, the blue and the red both have values equaling, well, we know it's root two over two, but it's about yeah, seven tenths. So if I add seven tenths and seven tenths, I get about 1.4, which is up here somewhere. This again is zero plus one, which is one. This looks like about 7 tenths and about negative 7 tenths, so it looks like about 0. 0 plus negative 1 is negative 1. About negative 7 tenths and negative 7 tenths is about negative 1.4. It's about right down here. That's negative 1. Those are opposites. 0. Let me go back to 1. So now my green graph is going to be the sum of the two graphs. Like so. Pretty straightforward if you think of it as values and you're just adding those two values. Now, again in this case, we're going to add cosine, but we're going to subtract two sine. And I'm not a big fan of subtracting. I would always rewrite this as the cosine x plus negative 2 sine of x. And then when I graph the two, obviously our cosine's in red and our negative sine 2x is in blue. And so again, I'm going to take and add those values of the red and the blue. This is like 0 plus 1. You'll notice here is about a half. All right. And then I've got oh, a little more than 1. So if I take half and a little more than negative 1, I move down about a half from here. I go up a half from that point, And that's roughly where I am. This is negative 2. This is about a half down. And that's about 1.5 down. So negative 1.5. And half is about two, a little more maybe. These two appear to be about close to one each, and they're both negative, so that's again close to two ish. They're a little bit under, so I'll go a little bit under two. This is zero and negative one. This looks like one and a little less than negative one, so that's gonna be oh, right around here. It's about a half down from here. This is straight at two. Um, moving almost a half up from this point. So I'll go up just a little bit. This is about a half up from here. Again, a little bit up. These are both a little less than one. So this is going to be a little less than two. And then we come back down to one right here. So green graph. And again, these are sketches. They aren't super accurate. But they are averagely close. And that's all I'm asking you to do. So we've added two trigonometric functions. Now we're going to add a linear function and a trigonometric function. The linear function in this case is a half x, which is a line, and the trig function is sine of x, so sine of x is in blue, y equals x is in red. So in this case, I did a slope of up 1 and over 2, roughly, right? Um, so in that case, if I'm going up 1 and over 2, Notice these are in radians, these are in whole numbers, so they're not quite equal as far as scale goes. This is about 3.14. 3.14 over here is about right around there. So you'll see the scales off just a little bit. So anyways, let's go ahead and do some additions. In this case, I'm going to take a number that's about a half 
add it to a number that's almost one. So I'm going to go up about a half from there, put a dot. Here, these are almost the same values. And again, they're about a one. So I'm going to keep it right around here. Now you'll notice right here, I'm at zero. And this is roughly going to be the same value. Then you'll notice here, again, I'm at zero. So I would be back to this point on the graph. And you'll notice I'm moving down about one at this point. So I'm going to move down from this line one, which puts me you know, right around here. Then I'm going to start connecting the dots. So I come here, go down, come here, go up. Now on the other side, you'll notice this is zero plus this value. And here's another zero plus this value, so I know I'm hitting the red line at these spots. This moves down about one at this point from this line. So if I move down from the red line one from this point, there's about a half and there's about one. And notice right here I'm moving up one to the blue line. So if I move from the red line up one, at this point right here, right around here, and my graph will look something like this to the left. So again, the key is being somewhat accurate with your intervals and your relative heights. All right, graph paper might help too. And uh, then you're just adding two values or subtracting two values, however you want to look at it, to get your sum of the two graphs. That's pretty much all we've got. Do your My Math Lab and uh, we'll chat about this tomorrow.